Hi, Kevin here. Nice to see you again. I wanted to show you what's happening in the kitchen garden. I am getting all new raised beds. Yay! Yeah, I decided to bite the bullet and purchase the wood and hire our handyman, John, to build the beds. I built them myself, but I'm afraid I'd spill my martini. And here's one of the old beds. As you can see, the wood has really rotted. Yeah. I designed this garden 12 years ago, so I did get a lot of use out of the old wood, which is, by the way, rough-hewn hemlock. And the new wood is also hemlock, and it looks I guess it's rough hewn as well, maybe a little less rough. Anyway, when John returns, I'm going to film a video so that you can see how he builds the beds. So we'll be back. Okay, John Brennan is here, so we can have a little chat with John and we can watch him work. Hi, John. Let's see. So this is, would you call this rough-hewn hemlock? Rough cut. Rough cut. Okay. It's just never been planed. Okay. So you set it up on these shims just to yeah, keep it all some level. Yeah, the milling isn't quite, you know, perfect. The milling's not quite perfect. Okay. And you pre-drilled the holes. Why is that helpful to do? It's, it's necessary if it's a hardwood, which this isn't, but it just makes it a lot easier to guide everything in and not wrestle with it. Okay. And it looks better. And it looks, yeah, definitely looks Plus, better. Plus, you know, I wanted to countersink the heads. Um, I don't need all this bite. I just needed like an inch. Okay. Here we go. Get ready for some noise. Not much noise at all. And these are, what kind of screws are these? Four inch deck screws. Four inch deck screws. Okay. When I built the previous beds, I think I used, uh, what did I use? Plaster? Plaster screws or drywall screws. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah, I mean they'll last for a, for a while before they rust. But there wasn't a lot of uh, screws sticking out of the board. Okay. Well, I know the the bed started falling apart. You know, a year or two <clears throat> after I built them, so I did not do a great job. I just did a fast job. Fast and cheap pretty much describes me. <laughs> Actually, we do want to watch this. So now, see there's a gap. Let's see. Over here. So John is, what are you going to do, ham hammer that in? Um, I should get a smaller screw. So you're just you're trying to get this part to join yeah, by, more evenly. By just screwing that in temporarily, I get the leverage, pull it back, screw it in, done. Okay, great. We'll be back. It has been very rainy here recently, so we're lucky to have at least a few hours of dryness. Get this job done. Aha, uh -huh. that's working. Yay! Yay, it's perfectly flush. Right now, this is a floating raised bed. 
Yeah, so this wood is taller than... This looks to be, John, about four inches taller than yeah, the other boards. Yeah, I think it's the other eights boards. and these are twelves. Okay. So these were eight inch over here. Just whenever I do a raised box, I always do twelves because you want that dirt height. Plus you want a little bit of room right. for no dirt. Right. Yeah, it's really, it's not necessary to fill the beds all the way to the top. Turned out. The whole thing is sitting, you know, on dirt, not floating. All right. But otherwise, I didn't change the grade. I just, I just went down a bit. All right. Oh, the soil looks beautiful. Oh, absolutely. It's nice and fluffy. You know what? It's from all the years and years of adding shredded leaves and then uh, mulching, either with shredded leaves or with straw. Straw makes a terrific mulch. And this is the watering system that John installed for me last summer. It's soaker hoses. And they are Every bed has its own, what is that called, John? Every bed has its own valve? Yeah, every, every one has its own control. Every bed has its own water control, so I can, I don't have to water every bed at the same time. I can turn off some of the beds. For any plants that simply need less water, Right. you can set that up and then just turn it on and it'll water itself at the rate all preset. And then here, I put down landscaping fabric about, I don't know, three, two or three weeks ago. And first I raked away all of the shredded bark mulch that I used to pave the paths. And then I put down the landscape fabric and my plan was to put the same shredded bark on top of the landscape fabric, but it turned out that so much of the bark had disintegrated that now I have to get new shredded bark. Wish me luck in finding that. Oh, and I wanted to show you that the lovage is coming up. Here it is. Lovage. A terrific herb that is very well known in Europe, especially Eastern Europe, and not very well known here in the States. Lovage has a very strong celery taste. I call it celery on steroids. Anyway, totally delicious. Uh, the plants, rather the shoots, are very small right now. It's a perennial, but they will grow to be seven to nine feet in about a month. Okay, we'll come back. Okay, another bed done. Yay! So off come the little planks. Wow, this is great. Such an improvement. Okay, it's several hours later and John has finished the bed, so let's have a look. He even removed all the old wood. Let's open the gate. Wow. What an improvement. Yeah, I knew that those old beds were, they were not just on their last legs. They had completed their run. And again, I got 12 years out of them. Now the beds in the center are 
made of pine. They're about five years old, and it's amazing that this pine, which is definitely not rot resistant, has held up so long. And then we have four more of the rough hewn, or what did John call it, the, um, the rough cut uh, hemlock. So then my next job is to acquire the shredded bark chips or mulch to finish the pathways. Yeah, I really love this garden. I'm grateful to have it. And this year, as I said, this year of all years, I think it's really important for me to have a big vegetable garden. And that's all for now. See you soon. Bye-bye.